Um, thank you very much, um, Mrs. Ali, and it's a pleasure to serve under you for um, the second time this week. And I pay tribute to uh, both my uh, honourable friends who have spoken on this uh, incredibly important issue. And it is so important to keep giving this issue uh, the attention that it deserves, because I, for one, don't think it is nearly widely enough reported, and consequently it's not taken as seriously as it should be yeah. by the British people. Yeah. In Somalia, we know that Christians are referred to as high-value targets, and indeed all minority religions in that country are heavily persecuted. Tiny populations of Christians in the country are also in danger from al-Shabaab, who've often murdered believers on the spot, especially if they're from a Muslim background. In the Central African Republic, in the year to the 30th of September 2020, there were at least 56 attacks on churches, with at least 35 Christians who've been killed for faith-related reasons. Open Doors reports that the destruction of churches has become common, something that is hard for us to understand here in the United Kingdom. And there is an urgent need for reconciliation between <coughs> Christians and Muslims. And the Archbishop of Canterbury has been absolutely right to call for a much greater focus on the need for reconciliation globally, and indeed for the United Kingdom to be in the forefront of promoting this, something I'm sure we would all agree with. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the most serious threats to Christians is that the eastern part of the country has become a safe haven for the Islamist group, the Allied Democratic Forces. This group is seeking to create an Islamic state in Uganda, and it has been targeting churches and Christians in the northeastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo for several years since its attempt to overthrow the Ugandan government failed. Under a month ago, so these issues are really current, Mrs. Ali, on the 29th of August, suspected ADF militants killed 19 civilians in North Kivu by machetes and with firearms, and with 13 houses sat on fire. Indeed, on the 1st of this month of September, four people were killed in the same area when a convoy was ambushed with dozens of people being abducted, and the government blamed the Allied Democratic Forces for the incident. In July 2020, a United Nations report suggested that the crimes committed by the Allied Democratic Forces might indeed amount to war crimes. In Cameroon, 53 Christians were killed for faith-related reasons in the year to the 30th of September 2020, including on the 6th of November 2019, suspected Boko Haram fighters killing retired pastor David McConey. The following month, Boko Haram began a series of attacks on Cameroon's Christians, including opening fire on a funeral, something that is quite almost impossible for us to understand. And there were, were homes looted uh, with seven Christians killed. In South Sudan, the dean of St. Luke's Cathedral and 32 worshippers were shot in September 2020. And the Church of England continues to support reconciliation efforts and to work with its international partners to end the protracted conflict. Tragically, on the 16th of August this year, two Catholic nuns were among those murdered on a bus and no perpetrators have yet been held to account. It is Nigeria, however, as my honourable friend for Congleton also said in her speech, which faces the greatest challenges in this part of Africa. The number of Christians killed is truly shocking. Open Doors estimates that in the year to the 30th of September 2020, at least 3,530 Christians, 1,020 Muslims were killed. It's also the case that practitioners of African traditional religions have also been violated. Now, the United Kingdom and Nigeria have particularly close relations and, of course, Nigeria is, is an important member of the Commonwealth. And there are many Nigerians in the United Kingdom who view with horror these atrocities back in their homeland. The murder of George Floyd earlier this year was truly shocking, and the global outrage which followed was entirely justified. I do, however, how, I do, however have sympathy 
for the headline I saw recently referring to the thousands of Nigerians killed for their faith this year, which asked, do these black lives matter? I'm grateful for the opportunity for today's debate to put these matters on the record and to express my concern about the seriousness of these issues and the ongoing need for reconciliation and the acceptance of diverse minorities and their right to practice their freedom of religion or belief without fear in Africa and indeed around the world. And as we look around the world, as the Honourable Gentleman, uh, Honourable Member for Strangford, who said when he introduced the debate, the fact that it is 300 million Christians globally who are being persecuted, mm. that is a very large yeah. number. I'm also shocked if we look back again to Nigeria, that in the last decade, you know, it's estimated that 37,500, I think my Honourable Friend for Concord and actually used a slightly higher figure, yes. 37,500 Christians have been killed. Mm. That is the size of a fair-sized British market town, one say, like, say, Dunstable, in my constituency. Where's the press? Where is the media focus yeah. on this issue? Yeah. It needs to be there, and it isn't always. Yeah. And as the Honourable Gentleman said, I think sometimes we have become desensitised, and all these, nay, all these mm -hmm. numbers and mm -hmm. figures, they sometimes get a bit numbing, yeah. which is why it's important just you know, to mention some individual names. And Leah Sh Sharibu has been mentioned earlier, one of the 276 Nigerian schoolgirls abducted on the 14th of April 2014, still in captivity. Her mother does not know what has happened to her, and we continue to hope and pray for her release. I do commend the government for taking this issue seriously. I have no doubt that it does. I am pleased that the government is committed to implementing all 22 of the Bishop of Truro's recommendations and I'm also pleased that the government will be hosting an international ministerial conference next year on freedom of religion or belief. That is absolutely right. But I think as the minister has heard today, this issue has perhaps never been more important and never has there been a greater need for the United Kingdom to take a lead in this area.